incredible sums of money. Reconquista UK, thank you for the super chat. Um, yeah, the, 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 as we've pointed out, there has been two autopsies of the death of George Floyd. The initial autopsy indicated that it was not the issue of the neck on the knee. The second autopsy that was done by the family indicated that it played a factor. We still haven't had it correctly done about it. As has been pointed out, George Floyd had L levels of fentanyl and other drugs in his system. But again, you don't hear about that. Now, the death of George Floyd, as I've pointed out, is, is tragic. All deaths are tragic. But George Floyd was not a saint. Annie Warmington, thank you for the super chat. George Floyd was not a saint. George Floyd was a career criminal. George Floyd, the story, I, 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 I'm still to get fully confirmed, is that George Floyd put a gun into a pregnant woman's stomach. He was a career criminal. However, I am a Christian. I am a Christian, and I believe in redemption, and I believe in different chances. So everyone has a chance at that. The key things about the death of George Floyd are twofold. And this is what the mainstream media pushes about the death of George Floyd, is that one, he was murdered by a police officer who put his neck on his knee, uh, knee on his neck. Well, firstly, there is charges pending against that. Who knows how it will go, but I think there's very good chances that he won't be found guilty of murder. Second of all, that it was a racially motivated killing at that. Even then, there is no evidence whatsoever it was racially motivated. The body cam footage, etc., has shown the police gave were, were trying to work with him to help him. But again, you're not allowed to talk about that. Look, I, I can't definitively say what happened either way, but you can pretty certainly say it doesn't look like there was a raid, but the media agenda on it is completely inaccurate. Completely inaccurate. And that is the facts of it. The BBC has published its latest list of high-paid stars, and just look at the smiles on these faces. Look at the smiles on these faces. And this, this is the thing, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. The world is a nice place. People are good. People are good. The world is a nice place. I'm telling myself happy affirmations as we speak right now. These people hate you. They despise you. They see you as dirt. If I knew that my salary was being paid as a result of the fear of over 75 year olds getting put in prison for failing to pay their TV license, I would refuse to get paid. I would refuse to get paid. I would say, no, I'm not doing that because it's wrong. It's exploitative. These people trouser millions, millions upon millions upon millions. And they think they do a good job. It, it cannot be underestimated just how bad this actually is. We are dealing, well, I appreciate you saying that, Laws. I'm, look, I'm not a saint. I constantly point that out. I'm, I'm not perfect. But, you, like anybody, you, you, it's a bit like, let me give you an analogy. If you were walking down the street and the guy in front of you dropped their wallet. Now, you'd have every right to take that wallet and walk off with it. It wouldn't be stealing because it was dropped on the 
the ground. But a decent person would say, mate, you've dropped your wallet and hand it back. They don't. They take it. They take that money. They take that money. Gary Lineker, earning between 1.75 to 1.754 mil, but it's dropped slightly. Now, he's taken a pay cut, of course. How unanimous, how wonderful of him. The, the one that really got me is Zoe Ball. Can someone explain to me how Zoe Ball can get paid all that money for presenting a radio show? Dan Wooten's pretty good value on talk radio. Talk radio's doing pretty well recently. Obviously, it's not as based in Red Pilled as, as UNN. And then we aren't as based in Red Pilled as others, of course, but we're reasonably based in Red Pilled. But Dan Wooten is is usually pretty bang on the money. And again, in, in fairness, I don't like him, but Aaron Bastani even called out the salaries here. Let's listen to what Dan Wooten had to say. This is a pretty good piece on it. Hey, it's revealed 695,000 more hardworking Brits have lost their jobs. They unleash a revoltingly extravagant rich list. The total salary bill for on-screen stars rose by £1 million to £144.6 million, proving all this talk of frugality is just that. While the BBC is rinsed and cash stripped Brits, the rich are getting richer. What is going on not, here? It's I'm not madness. doing Collins the BBC tonight. Friday. Much Friday. of this money from the license fee payers under threat of harassment and prosecution. Let's not forget. It's just unacceptable for the corporation to see fit to pay such huge salaries. I don't know how they can justify it in any way, especially in the current climate with so many people, you know, fur furloughed and facing redundancy. The businesses are closing. It's just a kick in the teeth from the BBC to any normal person, any normal working person in this country. It's unbelievable and it's been the year where they have said to those who's over 75, you're going to have to start paying for us. That's the clencher, isn't it? That's why it's so sad. Because they've said, we need more money. They've told the government, we need more money. We need to charge for the license fee. But with coronavirus going on, they're still targeting vulnerable people, the elderly, they target women in particular. And this is true. people are searching down the back of their sofas to scrape pennies together while the BBC is paying Zoe Balls an extra million pound pay rise. I, I don't understand how they can justify that whatsoever. Nobody wants to fund celebrities when they can't afford to live their normal lives. I, I think the full Excellent. range of, of, of payments should be declared, including that on the, that on the commercial. Yeah, uh, Brutal face pain. Thank you for that extremely generous super chat there. At this point, I don't recognise the world we live in today. No, I, I think a lot of us feel the same. Slurry Lineker is disgusting. My used underpants could present match of the day. Keep up your good work and take the 20 quid. Well, that is very, very generous of you. And yeah, I'm sure they could. And you know what? They would probably, they would probably leave <laughs> a worse smell in people's noses after it as well. You, you, do you know what the BBC, this is the thing, it is bigger than just these salaries. What this is about is a metropolitan elite that hates us. They despise us. They see us as nothing but cash cows. That would be like me coming on this show and hating you guys and just saying, oh yeah, I hate the people that follow UNN. I mean, they're all, they're all thick. I just want to sell them badges and take super chats. Now, maybe that's true, but obviously, you know, it's not true because I actually like you guys and I like talking to you. But do you know what I mean? They hate you and they hate us. They don't even feel the need to put on a good show. It's not even a good show. Gary Lineker presenting Match of the Day on Saturday night. People watch Match of the Day because they want to watch the football. They don't care what he says. And the, the other thing they're going to start doing, of course, is the whole diversity program within it as well. If you are a working class person in this country, specifically a white person and also a white male, you are at the bottom of the pile. You are, you are 
you are regarded as racist, uneducated, stupid, and you need the BBC to tell you what to think. Honestly, and 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 the the message that Lineker put out about the haters, incoming for the haters, as people are lo- no humility, no humility at all. Five year contract this guy gets given. No humility. Once upon a time, the BBC just had presenters. I remember that. They just had, remember like Peter Sissons or Michael Burke, people that just came on and presented. Why do we, we do, you do not need it, but what the fundamentals of this is, big picture, big picture. These people are paid to push an agenda. That agenda is globalist. That agenda is open borders. That agenda is anti nationalist. It is anti Brexit and it is anti Trump. That's why they get paid that money. That's the hidden secret of all of this. Because they are political lapdogs for the establishment. That's what it is. That's what it is. They are lap dogs for the establishment. That's why they get paid this money. Them all. Let us see them all. I'm sorry. If this is the BBC license fee that is being used to pay your salary, we have a right to see it. It, it, it absolutely infuriates me. It is what I'm going to call the great BBC cover. I want to see the strictly salaries. I want to see Jill the casualty Dando. salaries. Brilliant I want to broadcaster. See the salaries. Really there nice. Absolutely really no genuine. Reason why they should be covered? What up. happened I think to her? It's disgraceful. What happened to I'm Jill sorry, Dando? But the BBC is clearly shown that it will not the reform. BBC has and I wish the Conservative shown. Party would get a grip and decriminalise the licence fee because it's an abomination well, I, in Well, 20- I, I, I hope so too, Darren. Zoe Ball, for for example, lovely woman. I'm a big fan of hers personally. Do but she's lost 900,000 listeners over, over the past year. Yet for every listener she's lost, she's earned another pound from an ally in the commercial sector, would it? Neil. Yeah. It, it would just never happen. But it's really, uh, it's really a microcosm, of, isn't it, of the um, the way the BBC works. The guys who live in that isolated, pumped up world that is the BBC in London think that they know better than you and me and all those other listeners out there tuning into us at the moment. Gary Lineker has signed up with them for another five years, taking a 23% pay cut. Let's. Let's just focus on the reality of this. He is still getting paid £1.35 million yeah. pounds a year. Yeah. One For five three, more years. How many uh, over 75 uh, TV licences would that pay? Yeah. So over. It, it, so it we're going to be giving him over £6 million. Pounds. I like Darren. I like Darren. I like Darren as well. He's good value, but he's good to take the mickey out of sometimes. Sheffield TV host, look at this as well, as we point out all the time, follow the money, local media is now all bought off as well, local media is all bought off, government advertising as well, Sheffield TV host takes 20,000 pay cut, Sheffield TV host Dan Walker has taken a 20,000 pay cut, well, whoop de can do, Um. The BBC Breakfast and Football Socus earned between 260 and 264. Look, the Prime Minister of this country earns £150,000 per annum. The Prime Minister of this country has the decision making ability on the future of this country to launch wars. Obviously, there's Parliament as well, but they're nuclear codes. Nobody should earn more than that. I'm sorry, they shouldn't. I'm sorry, they, they, they just shouldn't be earning that. Figures reveal, on a positive note, the great TV licence turn-off. Um, this is the thing, some don't even earn 20000 a year yet. I don't. I don't earn 20000 a year. I'm not looking for sympathy because this is our business. 